Okay, I hope you guys can see me okay. It's probably not very bright. We are in the Ferrari. We're gonna go for a drive. I'm going to explain why in a second. First of all, let me crack a window. Listen to this. Oh, wait. When that valve opens, it becomes very loud. That's a cold start. Let's pull it out in the garage. This car is unbelievably noisy. I apologize to all my neighbors. Close the valve back up. Right, why are we going for a drive? Well, because I've really missed it, guys. I really miss driving, and especially this car. So basically, the situation is, quarantine is over in Monaco. They've announced that they have opened the doors, and you're allowed to go into Monaco or out of Monaco for work reasons. Now, my social media company, we have a few clients in Monaco, so I need to go in for a couple of meetings. It's perfectly open, perfectly fine to go in. I have a mask in the car, which I'll wear once I get out. Let's open those valves up. And I've missed driving so much that I was like, look, I need to take a car to get there. I'm going to take the Ferrari. And I might take the long road there. So that's all we're doing today. We're just going for a nice little drive in the Ferrari. Because I feel like often, you know, we try and make all sorts of different kinds of content. I guess we kind of forget just that the rule, taking a car out and just going for a drive, even though you guys know this car well, we've spoken about it, made plenty of videos with it. Why not? This is what I've missed the most. This is what I want to do, so why not share it with you guys? Close the valves as we get into town so we don't wake everyone up. I mean, the difference the valves make is pretty incredible. Obviously, as you heard at the beginning of the video, we're running on a cold engine currently, so we can't really push it at first, but hopefully by the end of the video, we'll be able to have a little bit of fun. I've only really taken the car to the shops. It's gonna be good for the car as well to be able to get out a little bit more. Right, God, the suspension's pretty, pretty hard. I'd forgotten how much this thing rides like a skateboard, but I, I really don't care. I mean, of course it rides like a skateboard, right? It's a supercar, it's not meant to ride like a Rolls. Ooh, speed bumps are still just as terrifying. Those haven't changed. This car takes quite a while to uh, warm up. Both the gearbox, the engine, and also the ceramic brakes. So early carbon ceramic brakes are just pretty slow uh, at warming up. So you kind of really need to stamp on them before they're effective. And for the first 10, 15, even 20 minutes, you're running on some pretty shoddy, not very good brakes. So you need to be quite careful and keep that in mind. And with these Ferraris, you do really need to get the engine going. Now there's a car coming past. Pull over. That noise, I mean, I had forgotten just how unbelievably loud this is. If it's your first time on the channel, in 70%, over 70% of you are not subscribed, so it may well be this is a Ferrari F430 Scuderia, um, which I bought probably around, coming up to six months now. Now, Ferrari 430 Scuderia, this one is a 2009, so it's an 11 year old car. Originally with 510 horsepower, this one with an exhaust and it's been slightly filled with, it's got 550 horsepower. It's also got the suspension from the Challenge Ferrari 430, which is a race going track only version of this car. So the suspension's, yeah, firm, very firm, but it means the car is perfectly planted. Now it's an absolute beauty, this. I love it, it's got a single clutch gearbox, but to come along for a drive on a nice road like this, we're lucky enough that most of the roads you take here are just pretty special. I mean, this is, at least for me, obviously I ended up purchasing the car, it's pretty high up in the list of cars that I, uh, I want to do this kind of driving. It's definitely top five. 
It's also got a Capristo exhaust, this car, which is what I was fiddling with at the beginning, with the valves. That gives it those kind of backfiring sounds and just makes it so loud. I mean, that's barely 4,000 RPM. And it's, it's loud. Now we're starting to get a bit of temperature into the engine, absolutely none into the brakes still. I mean, this, this is what I missed. I mean, just being able to take a car out. I mean, I hope, I hope you're all well. I hope you're all healthy, but at least the way things are shaping out down here in the south of France, it looks like, you know, we're getting there bit by bit. We may be seeing kind of the light at the end of the tunnel with the whole scenario. And little pleasures that you maybe would have taken for granted before, just like taking a car out or anything of the sort. It's such a luxury now, and it makes you kind of really appreciate those things, which is quite nice. I mean, I'm not even blasting, I'm just... Oh, I don't even, I don't even know. This is such a good feeling, and I just really wanted to take you guys along. The steering on this thing is so old school, so communicative. <sighs> that noise. Now, this era of cars, 2007 to like 2012, for me, this is like a golden era. Murcielago SV, SLS Black Series, this Scuderia, 599 GTO, all of these sorts of cars for me, Oh, it's just such a good era. We had naturally aspirated engines. Oh, sorry guys, I'm getting distracted. What was I saying? Naturally aspirated engines. They're the best. They're the best. And yes, they may be slightly outdated, and this one, yes, it may have a single clutch, which by no means is as competent as a double clutch gearbox. It's slower. It's more brutal. The life expectancy on the clutch is nowhere near as long. Do I care? Absolutely not. Do I care that there are cars now which maybe do not to 60? slightly faster absolutely not your nerve ring time maybe a little bit slower do i care not one bit what i care about is the character that a car like this has the way it makes you feel and very few modern cars make you feel the way this feels oh I mean, they're saying they don't make them like they used to. I really think this highlights that. I mean, if someone asks you, what makes you a car fan? What's so special about these cars? Take them in one of these. Take them in a Merchant Argo SV. Take them in a GT3 RS 997 with a manual. And if they don't understand, it's their problem. I mean, I don't know how you could look at this and not just feel. I mean, it makes you feel like a three-year-old. Did you ever have that feeling like if you got a video game or like a remote control car or something like that for the first time when you were younger? You know, you played Forza for the first time, you played Grand Gran Turismo, excuse me, for the first time. And you had access to these cars, not even necessarily, you know, at the beginning of the game, the most special cars, but you could go do what you wanted with them and you could drive them. And you just felt like, oh, this is unbelievable. I can drive, I, I, if I tell it to downshift, it'll downshift, I tell it to steer, it'll steer. And that made you feel like so in control and you could play for hours and hours on end. That's kind of how I feel right now, like, oh my God, I can actually do this and and it feels as good if not better than I'd ever hoped it would that gear shift 
Yeah. That was 55 miles an hour. No problem. Let's go into race mode. Because that's when it really starts slapping you around the back of the head. Like you've got a baseball bat. Jesus. This thing is, I mean, 550 horsepower. Let me tell you guys. You're going somewhere. You're getting there quickly. I'm lost for words. How many cars, after having owned them for six months granted for the last two, I haven't been able to drive it. But how many cars will give you goosebumps after six months when you get in it? I mean, I apologize to all the locals in this area because, you know, I don't apologize. You're welcome. This thing sounds amazing. This thing sounds unbelievable. It should be shared amongst the community. But yeah, how many cars will make you feel like this? It's unreal. It's unreal. I mean, they nailed it with this generation. Yes! Yes! You beauty! And just everything comes together so nicely. The steering so communicative and precise and rapid and the gearbox and the brutality of it kind of goes with like the noise and the nature of the car. The brakes are getting warmed up now. So are the tires. I'm running Michelins on this. The seats hold you in nicely, you got the harness. Oh. The suspension's hard, the visibility's good. This is what it was born to do. Not sit in a garage like it's been doing for the last two months. I have to speak to you when I lift off the throttle or else you won't hear what I'm saying. I love you! I love this car! I've never been happier to have to go to a meeting before. Oh my god! Whew! Now that we get slightly more in town, we can relax. I mean, I don't know if this video is going to make any sense to you necessarily. If it's going to be interesting to the audience or not. But I just thought, I'm getting back in and I'm driving and I want to take these guys along with me. Because this feels, at least to me, like something that should be shared. I've lost my voice from that, from screaming so much. I really hope that one day you, you can see this car and hear it. Because when I watch videos, I realize how much it doesn't quite do the car justice. It's not the same in video, trust me. Like, it's, it's cool in video, it sounds awesome, but in real, it's like a different level. So I really hope one day you can see it or hear it. And every time I usually take it out, I get messages from friends who live in the area. Like, where are you going? What are you up to? because they can hear the car and recognize it. Oh, this has been awesome. I've missed this so much. I mean, since I've bought the car, I've, I've basically been daily driving it whilst I've been here, and I'm moving back here now full time. And I mean, I can't, yeah, I just can't see myself not taking this car all, all the time, because. I just like, tell myself, right, I've got to go somewhere. Ah, I really want to take this card. 
I don't care that it's not comfortable or practical. I just, I just do not give a shit. A lot of people ask why I pull both paddles when I kind of come to a halt. Um, that puts the car in neutral. So then when you're on a traffic light like this, neutral, and you select first gear, and then you're good to go. I mean, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, you know, subscribe if you haven't already. There's gonna be plenty more of this now that I can actually go out and drive the car. So there's plenty more of this. My R8, hopefully I'll be picking up in not too long from London whenever I can. That's also got a pretty naughty exhaust on it. Having both of them together will be fairly cool. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll be seeing you again for another video very soon. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.